Hey everybody, my name is Dave DeSmit and I oversee the Young Adults Ministry at West London Alliance Church. About a year ago, we had the opportunity for a team of our young adults to travel to Angola, Africa as part of a short-term mission. While we were there, we worked with missionaries who are ministering to an unreached people group called the Kuvali. This tribe lives in some of the most remote parts of Angola. We've been back for a year now and we wanted to share with our church family and friends what we learned from this experience in terms of missions and our own relationships with God. So we'll look forward to hearing from each of the team members talk about what they learned from Mission Angola 2019. I would have to say um, the short-term missions in Angola affected my life um, by just ta taking a global perspective on life. The number one, I think, is just for praying for people um, in other countries. Just because I live in a certain place doesn't mean that's the only place that God loves and cares for people. Um, there's people who need prayer all over the world and people who need his word all over the world. Um, so I need to be constantly praying for those people um, to get reached and for their hearts to be changed by the Lord. As well, this just can be a willingness to learn and have experiences that are global. In quarantine for me right now, that's just me trying to learn the countries, learn where they are, um, respecting other people and other cultures just through understanding where they are in the world. A willingness to learn and just a willingness to see people on a global perspective, not as just one race, one people. Um, and although we are that, we are one church um, that God has called together, a family. Um, I need to be aware that there are different people and be okay with seeing different cultures and not being confused and nervous and ang anxious around those things. So um, just exposing myself to uh, the global church um, through prayer, um, through learning about other people and just exposing myself um, to uh, the cultures as God sees fit. And I know I can't do that without him. Um, only, the only experience that I have will come through him. So uh, just taking each experience I can um, when I can and just being open to it. Going to Angola opened my eyes to the global church. Uh, worshiping God with brothers and sisters who worship very differently from me uh, expanded my understanding of the church and helped me to see a little clearer just how big our God is. Um, it's easy for me to think of mission as bringing God to a new place, uh, but God is already there and he's already doing amazing transformative things. And our mission is just to join him in what he's already doing. Um, participating in church in a different culture, uh, for me, has enriched participating in church in our culture. Uh, spending a few days living with people who call the desert home really brings a new meaning to Jesus offering living water to the Samaritan woman. Um, hearing the loudest, most joyful, most enthusiastic worship I've ever experienced led by a group of women who have truly lost everything but their faith, it's produced a deep understanding of joy. Um, it's easier now when I encounter struggles in my life and the world around me to frame it like Paul did in uh, 1 Corinthians 12, where God says, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Um, I have now finished my first year studying theology at Redeemer University in Hamilton um, with the hope that it will prepare me to join in God's mission. I think the greatest positive impact and change that I've seen in my life as a result of our short-term trip to Angola would be in regards to prayer. Um, number one for missionaries themselves. Uh, I'm so thankful for the experience having lived with these uh, missionary families for even if it was just um, a few weeks. Um, I think it has given me a completely different perspective on how I pray for them and um, I mean, I'm not saying that someone needs to travel halfway across the world in order to be able to pray for missionaries, of course not, but um, it does give you a different perspective having lived with them and seeing, um, you know, like that I should be faithful in praying for their steadfastness, for their um, family lives and how they raise their kids, for the decisions they're making, for the struggles that they face living cross-culturally, um, and ultimately for their bold and faithful um, proclaiming of the gospel and of making disciples. And then number two, also with regards um, to my prayers for the unreached, um, going to the middle of the Angolan bush and meeting the Kuvale people who have never heard the name of Jesus. Um, it just gave me a completely different perspective on the Great Commission to go and make disciples of all nations. I think it has created um, 
an urgency in my heart to pray for the Lord to send out workers to his harvest fields, um, to pray for the softening of hearts and the movement of the Holy Spirit um, in powerful ways amongst these people groups, um, and ultimately that the name and gospel of Jesus Christ would be proclaimed where it hasn't already been in every tribe, tongue, nation, and language. One very important thing that mission and goal really taught me and instilled in me was how to trust God and what that actually looks like. Um, and that's because I think previously um, I'd never really been tested um, and my trust in God had never really been tested. I think in a modern society it's very easy to get around that, um, at least for me and in my life I, it had never really been put to the test but that completely changed. Um, when I was in Angola. I mean, you're sleeping in a one-person tent in the middle of the bush, um, and at that point, you're just really trusting God to lead you every second and every minute of every day that you're out there. And I'd never experienced that before, and just relying on God in that way was definitely a beautiful experience. And coming back, it really changed my life um, in that I felt God's calling um, before I left, but also when I returned to make the switch from health sciences to engineering. And when making that decision, um, just like in Angola, I really just had to trust in God. And I fell back on that experience in Angola and saying, you know what, God, if this is your calling for my life and this is your will for my life, then I'm going to pursue it faithfully and I'm going to trust in you. Um, and just like in Angola, um, over the past year, I've seen that decision uh, work for the better in my life for many ways, in many ways in which I could have never imagined. Um, and so it really just proved to me again that trusting in God is definitely the right decision. And um, even if it might be hard or make you uncomfortable, that there's a reason for it and no matter what um, there's good in it and there's a purpose even if you don't know what it is at the time God is going to work through that and um, make you better for it and yeah it was just an amazing amazing lesson that I really uh, I really thank you for my short term mission trip has allowed me to incorporate a couple of different things into my day to day uh, walk with Christ. Um, one of those being just simply a global perspective and being more globally minded about what's going on in the world and seeing past my own um, sphere of influence. Um, and how I see that really practically is through prayer. Um, before, I felt that I was only praying for myself and for people that I saw in my day to day. Um, but now I'm able to pray for missionaries and their work and what they're doing around the globe better. Um, I'm able to pray for different countries and their needs and have a better perspective on how that looks. Um, and I've also just been able to pray more uh, specifically for the spread of the gospel in Angola and countries um, similar to it uh, as well. I have really found myself um, understanding the need for discipleship better. Um, in Angola, that was such a prominent part of ministry is to share the gospel, but then also work through the gospel and help people better understand Christ. Um, so I've been trying to incorporate one-on-one um, -on -one discipleship and group discipleship um, and intentionality in that in my day-to-day. Before leaving a mission in Angola a year ago, I had started a business supporting adults with developmental disabilities and providing for them long-term housing. In the trip, I had prayed that through Angola, I would really be inspired in business as missions and be encouraged about how I can use this business to share the gospel. Upon returning from Mission Angola, I had committed to working full-time for the business and continuing to provide for the individuals with disabilities and their families physically with housing and support, but also spiritually by inviting them to church, praying with them, praying for them, and sharing the good news and the hope that I have and the reason that I'm starting this business. 
of course I'm waiting for God to continue to call me to other things or other missions uh, but each day I hope to continue to live missionally through the business and the career that God has given me right now. Something that I learned while in Angola was just the amount of preparation that's needed to even go and reach that one person that needs to hear the gospel. The years of language learning, even the length of time that's needed to pack a caravan with the camping equipment and food, the time that it takes to get the kids ready to leave and get out into the bush and even have the credibility from, from the tribes to speak to these people. It really helps me each day as I work on my business. Um, because some of these preparatory tasks like building a business plan, creating a financials can seem really irrelevant to gospel sharing and kingdom building. But I have to remind myself that this preparation work is crucial to be able to open up doors and have even the opportunity to share the good news with the people that ultimately I want to reach. There are a lot of things that I learned or had reinforced through this time in Angola. But one of the things that really stood out to me was just the realization again that not every people group has God's word, the Bible, available in the language that they speak. The Kuvali tribe was no exception. They don't even have their own language written down, let alone have copies of God's word. So that made me really appreciate the fact that in my hands I hold the word of God in a language that I can understand and read. And through that, yet to know the living God in the way of salvation through Jesus Christ. Two things that I have learned after my short-term mission trip to Angola was one, that God has placed a desire, a capacity, and a want to address the physical needs of his people. Um, whether that be emotionally and or um, completely physically. Um, I think secondly, he has given me a heart for the spiritual health of his people as well, um, a heart for the lost. Um, so those two things combined together, um, I think have been wonderful me for me to learn about. Um, but in terms of an exact decision, I think that is something that the Lord is still leading me in and still teaching me about and I eagerly await the day in which like the Lord will send me to a specific place and give me a time. Um, so as of that, that's all I know, but I know it's a process and I am prayerful and I am uh, listening to the Lord. So in regards to our commitment for long-term missions, I had kind of already made that decision um, to commit to long-term missions after my first trip in 2017. So this trip for me was less about making that commitment but it was more about discovering uh, what vocational missions really looked like uh, in that context so for me it was a, a very important lesson that I learned was um, that you're not constrained to whatever formal training you have I think I was going in with the impression that if you were trained as an engineer or trained as a doctor or whatever training you had that that's how you were going to serve and I think that's true for some people um, and those skills that you learn are very valuable, but it's definitely not a universal truth and God can use you in many different ways. And that was exemplified through the missionaries we spent time with in the bush. One of them is an engineer, and so me then making the decision um, and knowing that I was going into engineering, that really stuck out to me because he's not using that skill um, and that's not how he's serving. Um, I mean, he's still using it, um, and it's impacting his life in small ways, but that's not the main capacity he's there. He's there as a missionary, uh, and going into the unreached people groups. And so I think for me it was a very important lesson in saying that, sure, if God calls me to go somewhere and I serve as an engineer, then that's great. But I need to be open to... Um, the possibility that I may not use that skill and that's completely fine because in the end I'm just trying to uh, reach as many people as I can and glorify God uh, the best that I can and if that means that I don't necessarily use the engineering training that I've received then I have to be fine with it and um, trust God in that calling and say you know what God um, if that's where you're calling me then that's where I'm going to go. 
Uh, in terms of a commitment to long-term missions, I think the Lord used Mission Angola to um, affirm the path that he has me on towards long-term cross-cultural missions. Uh, I am going to continue to ask for wisdom and discernment as I take steps towards that end. Ultimately, I can uh, plan my course all, my want, all I want, but obviously it's the Lord that establishes um, my steps. So in terms of the immediate next steps, that could look like uh, I just graduated, so paying off my student debt, um, looking into potentially Bible college or some courses, and then ultimately, um, as the Lord leads, um, discerning a location and a sending organization and um, those details that the Lord is um, sovereign over and in control of that uh, I will continue to discern and um, continue to ask that he would lead and guide me for his namesake and for the spread of his glory among the nations. As a result of the Angola short-term missions trip, um, myself um, and my boyfriend Brett have uh, have committed to just keep long-term missions at the horizon of our site. Um, we will be running towards that goal of hopefully one day um, going into missions, whether that's short-term or long-term. Uh, only God knows, but every experience, everything that we have right now, we do our best to keep that as a perspective. So whether that's school, whether that's just family um, matters, our commitment, my commitment is that keep it open. That door to my best abilities will always be open. Um, and I don't know how that's going to happen. I don't have a job. I still have lots of schooling to go through. Um, I know that God, um, if it's his will, will get me the steps there. So my commitment is to keep that on, on the horizons. And I hope and pray that you guys would help me with that. Um, keep me accountable to that. Um, and just pray that God would lead my life in that direction. One way that I think this experience at Angola changed my perception on missions is just the importance of continual encouragement and prayer for those missionaries that we send overseas. For our church family, specifically in Angola, Kelly and Marcel Boers and their three sons live there. And just the necessity and encouragement that constant prayer and uh, phone calls and times of just texting over WhatsApp Knowing what an encouragement that is to the missionaries that we send overseas was really exemplified in the time that we spent there. Another thing that I learned too was just the importance of doing missions within the context of the local church. The importance of planting churches where there are not uh, any churches formed currently, of discipling uh, capable church leaders to take on leadership roles within those new churches. And all of that being done with the encouragement and prayers of a local church back home. This idea of a network of local churches praying for and equipping each other all around the globe is what I think we see in the New Testament. And my own personal experience of seeing that with my own eyes in Angola certainly reinforces that truth.